Hi guys, here I am again with my CNC plasma cutting table. Uh, I have been spending a lot of time tweaking this machine to make it cut better. But to tell the truth, most of that time is finding a way to deal with the high frequency interference. And finally, I got a noise free setup and that I haven't had any problem uh, with the interference anymore since I installed the new Max 3 controller board. Well, the lesson learned and paid for with time and money, uh, all that can be avoided uh, by making the right choices uh, before I start building this type of machine. So if you are intending to build a new machine or if you already got one and still having problem with the high frequency interference, I can tell you what are the options to make your machine work flawlessly. Just a warning, this video doesn't have any spectacular machining to show, only me bubbling about things. So if you are a pro, already have a good CNC plasma cutting table, or if you don't like my voice, you can just ignore this video. Or you can also just watch this and see if I said something wrong, please feel free to correct my mistakes. I'm sure that many others also will be thankful for your experience. I will start by showing my original configurations and tell you what are the wrong choices I made uh, so you can fix your machine if you have made the same mistakes. After that, I will tell you what are the alternatives uh, or better choice. It will come down mostly what type of plasma cutter you want to use. To build this machine, I got this cheap plasma cutter Cut50 with non-touch high frequency pilot arc because I was thinking that it is easy to make it CNC compatible. This type of machine can run both on 110 volt and 220 volt, uh, but of course it runs better on 220. When you first getting this machine, if the arc of your machine doesn't start correctly or it sputters, you should check the spark gap inside the machine. You will have to open the plasma cutter. Then you will have to look for the board that look like this and look for this part. Here you have two screws that you can loosen and adjust the distance of the gap here. This called spark gap and if it's too far away from each other, you will have to make it closer or if it's too close, you have to make it further. Uh, the distance here should be about 0.8 millimeter. And for the controller board, I got this cheap INR motion breakout board. It is a USB Max 3 board. I use this on my CNC milling machine and it works perfectly. So I thought it's cheap, it's good. I will use this for this plasma cutting table. Well, what a mistake that was. Uh, many times when I try running a G code, the high frequency interference from the plasma cutter made the controller board disconnect from the Max 3 software. Let me just show you an example. I will try to cut a row of 10 holes here and probably the problem with the interference will happen somewhere in between. Well, it just happened on the second hole, the torch just sputter and turn off. And now let me just show you how it looked like on the computer. Okay, so here you can see that I have the emergency mode like active. And also I have the driver watchdog triggered. So the control board kind of like reboot and it lost connection with the computer. And here as you can see that the X and Y coordination are lost. They are both negative numbers, which is not possible because the torch is supposed to be still in the working area. So now because the coordination are lost, you cannot really go back and recut the G code. You will have to start over or throw away your stock. And I showed in many of my videos, I tried many different things to avoid this problem. The first thing I did was to keep the trigger wire far away from the pilot out wire. That is the transmission line for the high frequency signal and that seemed to help a little bit. This trigger for the plasma cutter will be controlled by this relay. I can tell you right now that you don't need to worry about the type of relay. That is not where the problem came from. I tried many type of relay and relay configurations but when the problem happens, none of those setups worked. Many times I seem to be able to fix the problem. I was able to finish my cut successfully but recently I had to cut thick a sheet metal like this one, uh, one by eighth of an inch thick. And the interference came back when I increased the cutting ampage. This time it didn't matter what I did, I couldn't get rid of it. I spent many hours googling for solutions and read many forum threads. None of those solutions worked. But one thing I found in common between people that had the same problem is that they also use the Max 3 USB breakout board. 
and I didn't find anybody complaints about their board that have an Ethernet port. So I decided to try this Ethernet breakout board that I have. Uh, it's a knockoff version of a Chinese breakout board. Well, I didn't think that it was even possible. It is a fake NVM 6 axis board. But anyway, in the end, it works if you follow certain protocol. Let me just show you very quickly. To connect this board to Max 3, you can use a normal Ethernet cable. Connect the board to a router, then connect your computer to the router using Wi-Fi or Ethernet connection. I use Wi-Fi just for convenience of moving my laptop around. First of all, you should turn on the router. Just make sure that your router has to be ready, like done booting up, already started, LED are on. Then you can power on the controller board. As you can see that the router detects the controller board. If you are connecting the board directly to the computer, you will have to use a crossover Ethernet cable, the type of cable to make a local network between two computers directly. And the same thing with the router, make sure that your computer is also ready before powering on the controller board. And only open Max 3 once the controller board is connected to the router or your computer. If the breakout board is connected correctly, you should see this message. After installing the new breakout board, I haven't had any problem with the interference anymore. I tried the new board at many current settings on my plasma cutter, from low to high cutting ampage, from slow to fast cutting feed rates, as you can see here, uh, and it has never failed. Let me show you an example that I cut a few lines on this sheet at 45 amps and 60 psi. I will vary the cutting speed just to see which feed rate is best for these settings. So I think that changed the controller board with the right move and I kind of understand why the Ethernet breakout board is more resilient against the noise than the USB type. I think because it has better encoding and filtering protocol compared to the USB port. The Ethernet protocol was designed to connect the computer to a large network and to transmit the information through a long distance. During that transmission, I'm sure there are many types of noise that can affect the electrical signal in the Ethernet cable. If the platform doesn't have good filtering protocol, it won't be able to transmit the signal correctly, and I'm sure many emails will be lost or sent to the wrong person. Anyway, to summarize, if you get this type of plasma cutter with high frequency pilot arc, don't use the type of USB breakout board, either one that have an Ethernet port. Even though they are more expensive, you will get your money back from not spending the time debugging and fixing the interference problem. And a real NVEM breakout board will cost only about $60 on AliExpress, which is not bad. Now to the better choice of plasma cutter, I would advise you to buy the type that have the non-touch blowback or stock. This type of plasma cutter doesn't use high frequency signal to initiate the arc. Therefore, no high frequency interference. So with this type of plasma cutter, you can use your USB breakout board if you want to save money. 
uh, because they are cheap and also the USB port is more convenient but of course an Ethernet breakout board will still be a sure solution let me just show you a few examples of this type of plasma cutter that I found on Amazon if I were to buy again I would choose this one Hero Cut Cut 50i it has blowback pilot arc it is made for CNC machine as you can see here it has connectors to start the arc and it has also connector to output the arc voltage to the touch high controller unit and also arc ok signal output and one more thing that I like about this machine is that it uses a PT40 torch this torch has different nozzle aperture size just go from 0.6mm to 0.9mm you can find those consumable on AliExpress for very reasonable price those small aperture size are a lot more suitable to cut at low ampage compared to other torch that have the aperture size bigger than 1.1mm the small aperture will help you to cut sharper corners and also the cut will be more precise another choice for the plasma cutter would be this one uh, from Lotus it is the same type of plasma cutter that has the same type of connector as you can see here it also uses the same torch as the Hero Cut so this one is a bit more well known brand and that's why the price is a bit higher now the last choice is the cheapest one in price for the plasma cutter but not the cheapest one in terms of operating cost it is a very basic plasma cutter without pilot arc such as this one here the price is very low compared to the other one uh, a lot of you probably will ask how the CNC machine can start the arc without the pilot arc there is a solution is to create your own pilot arc I learned this from googling around and watch videos on YouTube let me repeat that solution to you if you wanted to see the original video where I learned it from look at the link in the description of this video to create your own pilot arc you will need a long wire the longer the better this wire has to be big enough to send the high cutting ampage for a short amount of time what you will need to do is to attach one end of this wire to the nozzle of the torch on my torch here I have my shield installed so it's not easy to attach the wire let me show you an example on the PAT torch you take the wire attach it to the nozzle like this make sure that the wire have a firm contact with the nozzle then you can tape the wire up here so it doesn't fall off this end of the wire, you strip it connect it to the ground clamp like this and make sure that the ground clamp is clamped to the workpiece for this solution, I had many people ask me about this wire that make the nozzle is constantly connected to the ground clamp will that make the nozzle burn out faster or get destroyed right away? And the answer is probably yes but you can limit the damages by making the wire very long and always have the workpiece under the torch that way the resistance of the wire is much higher compared to the resistance of the workpiece to the clamp and the cutting current will transfer mostly through the sheet metal to the clamp not through the nozzle and this wire they still part of the current run through the wire and make the nozzle burn out a bit faster that's why I said it's not the cheapest solution in terms of uh, operating cost with this type of plasma cutter same as the blowback pilot aux ones you can use a USB breakout board but the other breakout board that have an Ethernet port will still be a better solution if you are willing to pay a bit more for me I am more leaning to Max 3 or other type of breakout board uh, that support the function of a TSC uh, because you might want to install one later so I don't really recommend gerbil based breakout board even though they are really cheap I'm sorry that I couldn't show any of the beautiful cuts today but I hope that this video is still useful by providing good information that will help you making the right choices for your current or future CNC plasma table build and hopefully you will need to spend time and money like I did to debug something that you can avoid very easily